The time has come for the average PC gamer to reclaim the programmable keypad. There's plenty of uses for the Elgato Stream Deck for people who live stream, but what about gamers who just game for the game and not for the stream? Well, it turns out there's plenty of stuff that's super helpful for gamers that aren't going live that you can set up with this little guy. And that's why today on UFD Tech, we're listing five Stream Deck plugins every PC gamer should be using. At its core, the Stream Deck is a productivity tool. It's marketed to streamers because it's an ideal device for live switching and controlling peripherals that add to the live stream experience. We use one here every day when we're live on Twitch, which got us wondering what else these things are good for. A quick Google search can show you a ton of results as to how you can use one of these to maximize your efficiency at work by tracking progress and keeping you off of 9gag when you should be in your team's meeting. But here's the thing, nobody's talking about arguably the biggest crossover market with the streamers that are using the stream decks. Gamers! Hey, you shut up when I'm talking to you! But how would gamers use the Stream Deck? Can it play Fortnite for you? Well, maybe, actually. But the good old reliable keyboard and mouse or controller can pretty safely handle games themselves. You know what's awkward enough to need adjusting, though? Alt-tabbing to adjust your PC's ecosystem while you're trying to enjoy your game? Gamers pretty much know how to do their thing, and messing too much with controls can be considered cheating in some games. But as a gamer, I hate being pulled out of my session to tinker with settings and windows when what I should be really doing is cranking sick 90s with my homies on Discord. First, we have the Audio Switcher plugin, which gives you dedicated buttons to toggle between audio devices. It makes it super easy to switch between your headset and speakers if that's something you're doing constantly. It's also especially handy for Discord too, because it can be used to hot swap between outputs and inputs. So if you keep your Discord audio settings set to default, you can double check your hardware at the push of a button. And maybe then your dumb friends will stop complaining when your PC randomly decides to make your default input your webcam and you sound weird and they make fun of you. And then the next few minutes turn into everyone continuously yelling what until you're able to go into your settings and remap your input device. Can anyone relate to that? Just me? But beyond that, this is great for quickly switching between audio sources when you need it done ASAP. If I'm playing a particularly vulgar game and my kids walk in the room, I want two things. Number one, to miss nothing, and two, them to miss everything. Hot swapping to my headphones with the Stream Deck feels amazing and incredibly simple. If you take nothing else from this list and you're often switching between headphones and speakers, do yourself a favor and check this one out. And that naturally takes us to the Discord plugin. This one seems like a no-brainer, but it's something everyone with a Discord account and a Stream Deck should be using. You can use it to set dedicated buttons to quickly enter specific voice and text channels, which is awesome if you're in a video call on your second monitor and someone sends something in the general chat and you need to quickly toggle over without clicking out of your game. Does that happen to anyone else? You can also set buttons to mute and deafen, which I personally like more than setting keyboard binds for those functions. I just don't trust myself around the numpad like that. And let's be honest, if you're gaming on a PC and you're watching this video, chances are you're using Discord at least on a semi-regular basis. Why not use this plugin to make your life a little easier? What could go wrong? The Windows Mover and Resizer plugin is kind of crazy. It enables you to move and resize specific windows at the push of a button. So for example, I like to play with my game on my left monitor and Chrome and Discord open on my right monitor, taking up the left and right halves of the screen, respectively. Sometimes in between matches, those windows get a little jostled, and then I forget to adjust them back to their original original positions for the next time I'm dropping into Fortnite. But with this plugin, I don't have to worry. I just press the button and balance is restored and applications can have multiple resizes mapped to multiple buttons. So when paired with the media controller plugin, you can have ease of access for whatever video you're watching on the other monitor while you're zoning out and searching for Minecraft diamonds. But that's just how I'm using it. You can literally program this thing to adjust any window on your desktop to any predetermined size and location. You could use it to bring your calculator to the front of your screen, quest walkthroughs, work emails, if you're being a little rascal, the possibilities are really endless, and I'd love to see how you guys actually use this in the comments. Next up is the Super Macro plugin. So this one's got a lot of uses. At the simplest level, you can set it up for your Stream Deck keys to output specific messages to your multiplayer teammates, but you can also pretty much program this to do any combination of keystrokes and mouse inputs. You can even use it to customize your mouse's location. So if for some reason you wanted to set a single button, that could theoretically as quickly as possible build you into a protective structure in Fortnite? You could. But macros can trigger the anti-cheat and that could get you banned, so maybe don't. We ended up using it to quickly navigate to different Fortnite game modes. The macro goes through the menu options at the press of a single button. We're confident that you'll be able to find a use for this, even if it's not technically related to your gameplay. And I'm betting if you're really into MMOs or MOBAs, you'll probably be able to get some serious use out of this one. Just be careful and don't let me catch you cheating. No one has ever done that! No one has ever!
ever done that in the history of Dota. And before we get into our final plugin, I just really wanted to show you how you can physically use your Stream Deck to actually play games. I don't know exactly why you'd want to do this, but it's completely possible to just use your Stream Deck in place of the left side of your keyboard when playing PC games. And if you're feeling really adventurous, you can just map out your deck to be a whole freaking controller, which I don't know, you could probably use for some retro emulation or 2D platforming like Hollow Knight or Dead Cells. But finally, we have the IFTTT plugin, and this one is huge. It stands for If This Then That, and it's essentially an integration with a website of the same name that uses webhooks or messages sent to the internet from apps to control your smart home devices. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Brett, the Stream Deck already has integration with NanoLeaves, and that's true. But what it doesn't have is integration with over 700 apps, services, or devices that make or receive web requests. So using this service, there's a ton of options, like an overwhelming amount of options. Good. It's it's enough slices. But we're thinking of two things specifically, lights and temperature. Bear with me here. Have you ever gotten all cozy and ready to start cranking in Fortnite, but then, oh no, you left your lights on and you just finished wrapping your legs up in your gamer blankie? Well, if you connected your smart lights to your stream deck, you could dim those bad boys without so much as twitching your toes. Oh, but now you're at an uncomfortable temperature, you say? Well, if your electric heater and AC were each connected to a wireless smart plug, you'd be able to toggle them on and off from the comfort of your desk. Or better yet, connect it to your Google Nest smart thermostat. The biggest downside is that there's a subscription fee for the service, so you'll have to judge for yourself as to whether or not warm pigs on demand is worth it to you. And just in case you don't actually own a stream deck, keep in mind that Elgato actually has a mobile app that lets you use your phone in place of a deck for either 25 bucks a year or $2.99 a month, and you can completely repurpose an old device to have a dedicated stream deck at a fraction of the price. Any one of these setups could potentially make the stream deck a great device for gaming, but combining the power of programmability with all the different options that we mentioned does make it so that the Elgato Stream Deck can provide a lot of setups for not just streamers, but gamers as well. And really at this point, you're only limited by what your imagination can come up with, especially once you start getting into webhook requests you can make this thing basically your entire livelihood. Let us know if you have any practical and useful things that you do with your stream deck that don't apply to live streaming. Let us know down below in the comments. Maybe we'll do a repeat of this video in the future. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Don't forget, your pigs are warm and your toasty is blanketed.